a very flexible device and you'll find it very useful for simple tasks and well uh, you can uh, uh, even use for complex things and even uh, you can uh, uh, arrange a lot of them and make them communicate so they are uh, very good for very big projects too in this case uh, we are uh, focusing in some simple tasks tasks uh, like uh, deploying uh, asp.net core uh, apis and some extra extra uh, final surprise i have for you uh, in addition to one giveaway we are giving you uh, giving away a raspberry p zero set model set uh, for the attendees well let, let's start i hope some people joins how some people join during the the webinar okay well this is me it's the typical first slide of every webinar you can contact me at twitter at linkedin and my email my uh, professional email uh, this is the agenda the first uh, the very first uh, point of this is the installation of raspian raspian uh, it's a distro of linux for the for this architecture the arm32 that runs uh, on uh, this mod, little little uh, mod, modern board uh, the will will uh, take two different approaches for for installing and starting up the, the this operating system the raspian uh, operating system one is the standard method and the second is the headless method. The standard method uh, requires you to plug in the display, the mouse, and the keyboard. And the headless method is a uh, well. It's very convenient because you don't need to plug in any any component. You can access your Raspberry Pi without uh, even connecting anything from your PC. It will automatically uh, connect to your Wi-Fi or LAN network and you can initiate uh, and start some terminals uh, and execute commands on it. The second point is the installation of additional packages. Uh, the third one, the installation of the .NET Core itself in order to run our applications and well, for the, the creation of finally the creation of dotnet core apps well the first is a uh, very basic asp.net core in which you can a server in the raspberry pi and that's very very uh, interesting uh, well do we have add uh, um, a manual deployment and automated deployment uh, well, we'll focus on the automated deployment because in the end, the, the method that you will like more, um, it doesn't waste your time. That is so important nowadays. And uh, well, I added an extra point uh, that it's about working with the port that uh, every Raspberry Pi has it's the GPIO general purpose input output. Uh, well, well, we'll see it uh, at the very end of the, uh, of the webinar, class 10, in order to get the uh, appropriate speed and and well it it really needs uh, a minimum bright bright speed 
to, to perform well. And a PC to carry out the installation. Uh, and in Windows, I hope you don't, you don't mind. Uh, these steps are focused on Windows users that don't know um, much about uh, Linux. It's uh, fine because I think most of uh, .NET developers are focused on Windows and using Visual Studio. Uh, it's it's a special this webinar is special for these kind of users. And well, finally, we need a card reader for the micro SD installation. Uh, we have to write to write to files uh, inside the micro SD and a network connection that it can it can be Wi-Fi or LAN. Well, uh, this is just a reference. Uh, well, in fact, these slides are, uh, are thought to be a guide, a very, very uh, pragmatic guide to make you, uh, make you easy, very easy to follow. And if you follow all these steps from, from the beginning to the end, you're getting, uh, you're, you're, you're gonna be successful deploying. Uh, so uh, you don't have to take into account uh, any slides specifically. You will have the slides available for downloading uh, after the webinar has fin finished. And, and well, and you will uh, find out that the slides are pretty straightforward to follow. And every step is is very detailed. Uh, you, uh, as, as I said before, this is for well, let's say for dummies like me, and uh, it has some other more complex topics inside. But you don't have to remember everything, and we are focusing only on the in interesting topics. Uh, well, uh, this is a. This is the download page for the Raspbian system. There are two versions. The one you have to, well, you, you should, you should download this, the desktop version. That is easier for us. <laughs> uh, well, it has a graphical interface that is very nice to use. It's, I think it's genome based. Genome, I think it's pronounced uh, like that. And well, the, the image com comes compressed in a zip file. Inside this file, you, you will find a uh, .emig file that is the image you have to write. Uh, well, you have to extract the image, for example, distract it to the desktop. And after that, you have to write the image into the S micro SD card. For that, we will use a tool that is called Win32 Disk Imager. You can download and it's for your convenience. This is your link. After how you have installed this application, you will uh, discover easily that it's a very simple uh, tool. You only have to choose. Uh, well, I don't know if you appreciate the uh, uh, Well, this is a, a button. You have to browse for the image to, in order to write it. And after seeing the button, uh, get ready to wait for like 15 minutes, depending on the performance of, of your SD card. After that, well, uh, the SD card is ready to be put into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, well, now that the system is written, the image is on the SD card, we have two options uh, to make everything connected and uh, configured. The first is the standard installation, and the second one is headless installation. Uh, well, we'll point to the standard uh, installation 
um, and we I, I'll, I'll explain it because it's the basic one every everyone that has installed uh, Raspbian into the Raspberry Pi has uh, first has first uh, tried with this method and they have list that it's very convenient and it's a bit complex too but in the end it's very useful to know it to to know how to how to use it because in some uh, situations you don't have a spare uh, spare keyboard on an extra extra display uh, you have to uh, unplug and plug again everything in order to configure your installation in the raspberry pi so they have less is it's well it, it's the one i use currently uh, let's head to the standard installation the standard installation well uh, you just have uh, uh, to recover from 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 the writing of the image and well after writing the image just remove the card just put it inside the micro micro sd slot and connect the mouse the keyboard and the and the display uh, you will have to use the all like three ports maybe uh, and after that you have to power it on uh, record to the Raspberry Pi and wait until the desktop is shown. Well, uh, it's likely to to boot without any problem. So just wait. You will see a lot of uh, log messages going going up to on the screen. And after that, you will be boot uh, directly to the desktop. Just select. Uh, the start menu that is on on the desktop and select preferences and go to the Raspberry Pi configuration. Why are why are we going to this configuration? Well, the Raspberry Pi comes with a minimum uh, security options for our convenience, and we have to en enable some protocol in order to connect to it remotely this protocol is SSSH. SSH. okay in order to enable it we have to uh, go to the uh, raspberry pi configuration under the interfaces tab you will find an option button but with the ssh protocol uh, labeled you just go to the enable the state and press OK. Well, uh, after you have uh, set this configuration, the uh, next the, the next step you have to you have to do is to connect to your local network. You can do it pressing and clicking this button. Uh, is an icon with two arrows and just select turn on Wi-Fi. If you have a LAN network, well, just uh, connect the, the, the network cable to your Raspberry Pi and depending on your configuration, your router, your modern router configuration, uh, it will get your uh, the IP automatically. And once we have connected, we need to know our IP because in order to connect to the Raspberry Pi, we need to know its address. And well, to find out which IP address uh, our Raspberry has, you have to open a terminal console inside. You will find the terminal icon. Uh, it's very easy. You just have to look on the uh, application bar that is it's uh, on the upper side uh, you open the terminal and type ifconfig this command uh, lists the different interfaces that your raspberry is connected to and depending on your connection if it's the wi-fi you will be shown with this 
WLAN 0. The check this address, I, INET address, the, this is the, the local IP you need to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, in our case, it's this one. After you have this, this you have to remember or not uh, write it down because you use it very soon. Well, considering that we have completed the, the first method, that it's the manual method, method to connect to our Raspberry Pi, uh, it will, uh, it, uh, we will have finished and we, we, we will just connect to it. But before, before continuing, I will describe the headless method to do uh, everything we did in the last steps, but without uh, actually connecting any, any component to the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi will alone connect to the network and the SSH protocol will be enabled by default using this headless method. Uh, just uh, put the, the previous steps in a box. It's, for the, it's, it's only for, for the manual uh, setup. And we are going right now to describe the headless method that makes everything that we, we did before uh, useless. So I well I will recommend you I, I recommend you this method uh, because well the, the very first time you install and configure the Raspberry Pi it's maybe better to follow the the previous method but well uh, this is as I said very convenient well uh, in order to do this method just open the file explorer and well I forgot. Uh, we are in the step when we have just written our SD card, the, the Raspbian uh, system to the SD card, and we are resuming from them. Uh, after the image has been written, just uh, open the file, file explorer, find the drive letter uh, that is labeled as boot. You will find one boot drive. And inside, inside the root, the root of the boot, uh, the very first uh, folder you will find, create a file called SSH without extension. You, uh, well, in, in Windows, it's not so easy to create a, a file without extension. Uh, so the best way to to get this uh, to make it easy is to go to folder options and and check this little option hide extension extensions for known file types you have to uncheck it and after that you will see all the extensions pretty much every developer i know have this unchecked but if you don't have it, don't worry, just do it. And after that, you just right click and create a new text file and put the name SSH and delete the uh, TXT extension. And it's, it's uh, in order to enable the SSH protocol, you just have to do this as soon as the Raspberry Pi boots uh, whenever it finds this file it will enable the ASH protocol and we are not done yet because in order to make our raspberry pi connect to our network we have to create another file specific file that the raspberry raspberry pi will look for when booting. It's the WPA supplicant. If you create this uh, file in the same folder, the same root folder of the boot, uh, the boot drive, 
uh, you, uh, you put this uh, content inside the file, well, you just have to create it first. And you, it's better that you put the TXT extension uh, uh, at the first, firstly, because if you don't put the TXT extension, you cannot you cannot open it convenient conveniently. You just put the TXT extension, open it, because uh, if you double click it the notepad will open and you will uh, be able to to paste all these contents into the file uh, with ease and well pasting this file and putting your configuration the country i think it's optional but it's better if you put it i haven't tried without the country uh, and i don't really know if it works or or not that you better put this EN, if, if, if you are in an English uh, country, and for example, for, for Spain, it will be ES, and after the country has been configured, you just go ahead to the network section and spe specify your SSD, SSID. Uh, well, it's the network identifier you created or well, where you are connected, your network ID, and the password in case you have this configured that is very, very recommendable. Uh, so just putting these parameters, you will uh, be able uh, to uh, specify the configuration that your Wi-Fi uh, on uh, after uh, 90 seconds approximately, it should boot properly should boot you don't you don't see you don't see anything but you yes you have have just to to believe that it's turning on and booting uh, just okay just fine and after this time we can find out the ip because we don't know we don't know anything about our raspberry pi and uh, well in order to discover the, the IP that our Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi has, been, has been assigned with, uh, by our router, we have to or we may use one tool I have discovered that it's an angry IP scanner. This angry IP scanner scans your local network to discover every device that it's connected to it. Uh, well, after downloading and installing, press the start button and just insert a valid range inside your local network that is usually this one. Uh, you have, well, just trust me, if you don't know this, <laughs> it's very likely that you, you, are, you are not a developer. Well, after you have specified the, the range of IPs to scan, just click start. This is in Spanish because uh, the, the program, the application itself, auto translates to the uh, language it's running on. And this is Spanish. Well, let's start this, the start button here and wait. Wait just for the scan to complete. After the scan is complete, you will find out some red some, some registry entries, some registrations and some items that are in red and dark in and ones that are in blue. Uh, the ones in blue are uh, devices that has have answered to the, to the scan. In a blue uh, circle, we will, we will find uh, the Raspberry Pi listed with the IP we uh, have to use in order to connect. This is an automatic process. You don't have to worry, just click on start and 
after maybe one minute, every every address will be scanned, and eventually you will be popped with Raspberry Pi as a host name. This is the host name, and just copy this number and write or write it down in order to connect after this slide. Well, either headless, either manual. You know how how the 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 address of the Raspberry Pi, and we are going to connect to it. To connect to it, we need some tool that is able to connect to the SSH protocol. One uh, very popular popular tool for this uh, for for this uh, goal is Putty. Just head over to putty.org and download it and after we have installed the putty we just have to put the ip address of our raspberry pi in this box and well click open and we will be welcomed by a login prompt in order to connect to the Pi, we have to log in with these default credentials. Username, Pi, password, Raspberry. Very easy to remember. After we have logged in, we will uh, enter command prompt uh, and we will have to deal with it. And it's very you see, don't don't be afraid of and prompt. Everything is on light, so just uh, bear with me on this exciting uh, trip to the uh, to the Linux system. And we have just uh, connected to our Raspberry Pi. Well, uh, right now I can show you how it actually connects. I have a Raspberry Pi here that is called Metal Sludge, and we are going to connect to it. Well, <laughs> it's funny because I have logged before, and it's it isn't uh, asking me uh, the credential, so it's it's just uh, there. You have just put ls command, and you will. Uh, get into into the directory contents of the Raspberry Pi. Well, I have another another Raspberry Pi. I have I have to uh, let me disconnect and connect to the other Raspberry Pi. Uh, this one Raspberry Pi. Okay, this is asking uh, for the password. You will get something like that in Putty. This program is a very different, uh, not not very different. It's another another client, another SSH client that I purchased on the Windows Store and it looks very nice. It's very used. It's very useful, and it allows uh, everything we need. Uh, well, once you know, and I have shown that the Raspberry Pi, Pi, Pi is, sorry, I, I used to say P because uh, Spanish, Spanish uh, well, it's Pi, Pi like, we eat Pi. Well, after we have connected to the Raspberry Pi, we are ready to install the Samba, uh, this Samba service that will allow us to access the files of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this service uh, is very easy to configure and install, and I think it's worth enabling, en enabling this service. To install this service, you just have to go to the uh, terminal like this, like this, and just sudo sudo apt apt get update and so on uh, 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 
update and so on. After you have completed everything, every, every step, you just have to configure it, editing this uh, little configuration file. This configuration file will just uh, show you how to how how it look how it looks. It looks like that. Samba S M B and you have to edit this file and put this configuration. You have to uncomment this line that says Queen support. Uh, just take a look at the difference. This uh, I have just configured this file, so it's it's no difference. And you just have to look at the Queen's support that you have to uncomment. You comment and uncomment lines by using this. And after you have put this. You have to go to the work work group, work work group. Sorry, and in this case, it's already configured. If you use another work group, work, work group, just uh, put it here. And in the last step, configuring it, you should add this entry at the very bottom of the file very bottom of the file it looks like this let me go okay I have in this in, in my case I have two uh, uh, two entry the P home and this XHDD entry because I'm using two shares two shared files uh, this one is uh, mounting the home that uh, slash high user so you will have you, you will be able to access the the whole directory that your user has uh, that it's the the thing we want and after we have configured samba uh, we have to configure a password for the pi user just uh, execute this command for the Pi user, and you just have to remember that it's the the, uh, the password should be different from the default or the the password that the Pi user is using. So, for example, we are using the default credentials. The username is Pi, and the password is Raspberry. And you don't, uh, you don't. Uh, well, you you have you don't have to put Raspberry to this password. It won't let you do that. You have to choose a different password. For example, well, in, in like one, two, three, four, or or whatever, uh, it's not a very good password, but easy to remember. And well, uh, uh, it's not a good password at all. Just find a, a secure password, a safe password for everything. And well, after this, Samba is configured. Here's the shared resource. You don't have to root your Raspberry Pi. Just go to to network and type here well you, you in case you have the network discovery enabled the raspberry pi will appear automatically but if you don't uh, get this just write uh, write this into into the uh, address bar let me show you uh, just uh, just write this Raspberry Pi into the address bar. Uh, sorry, it's this 
these bars, these kind of slashes, and you will get this shared folder. After you double click, Windows will ask you for the credentials to access this resource. Just put the PI user and the previously uh, pass the previous password we have typed. And after that, we will be inside the Raspberry Pi file system. Uh, we have this file system for our convenience. We can do deployments, check log files or wherever or share anything in order to in order to uh, copy installations or whatever and well we are going now to install the netcore runtime this is needed because without this runtime it's like the java runtime uh, if you don't have it installed then .NET Core programs will not run. Uh, these are all the steps that you have to, well, not the six steps, but the, the exact, exact orders, the exact uh, commands that you have to uh, execute in order to get this, this .NET Core runtime installed. After we have installed it, we can run .NET dot, uh, um, hyphen info. I don't know how you say this hyphen. Uh, well, I say minus in Spanish. And well, we have um, right now the .NET SDK. Uh, well, not the SDK, but the .NET runtime installed, and we can verify it running oh, sorry uh, what are you saying <laughs> i have forgotten uh net info well it seems it's double double hyphen i don't really remember oh yes <laughs> in the slides uh, it's only one hyphen or or maybe it looks like one but it's two uh, once we have put this correctly you know uh, and you see you see the the version okay we have the runtime installed so what's next oh, uh, in this slide i'm saying that you can uh, develop and build your application your application uh, on your Raspberry Pi, uh, but uh, the Netcore, uh, the, the Netcore that mm, enables this is the 3.0, and it's it's still in preview. So we are going to do this uh, to to develop and um, build the program into the PC, and we will generate everything locally. In Windows with Visual Studio, Visual Studio, and later we will deploy the application. Uh, well, and uh, now it's the time to open Visual Studio. I will open it right now, and uh, let me let me do it. Uh, uh, where is the web? Web, 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 web. Okay. ASP.NET Core application. My web API. Let's create the default web application. You have to follow this. You see this? Uh, it's the very same screen. Just click on OK um, for convenience. You see this has changed just for convenience. Don't configure for HTTPS, at least for now. Create this and after this is created, we have the default application. I won't uh, spend a lot of time 
uh, with this because it's very easy. Uh, more or less, everyone has created an API application with the default wizard. And uh, the only thing we have to know now is that we should open a PowerShell or command uh, command line, the, the CMD command line, in order to execute some command. This will build this this project, this application, for the Linux ARM32 architecture. And the command we have to type is this, .NET publish uh, for this architecture. You have uh, a nice snapshot here. Uh, this is the output. And after this is finished, head over to this folder inside the uh, inside the uh, uh, your project you will find the bin debug netcore app and linux arm publish and uh, uh, inside this folder you will find the well i, I i'm going to to demonstrate uh, how is how, how it's it's done by myself uh, better to show it open a command line and the command line opens here opens here yes uh -huh. this is the folder okay we are going to write the command it's dot net publish dot net publish R Linux ARM. Okay. Now it's building and it's finished. And well, we can look look inside. Bean debug netcore a app. Linux ARM and publish. Here are the build results targeted specifically specifically for the Linux uh, for their Linux ARM architecture. Notice the nice files for Linux. SO files. Well, in order to run our application inside the, the Raspberry Pi, we have just copy these files, the Raspberry Pi, opening, opening the Samba shared. We have before. So in our case, we head to the P home, and for instance, we could create a new folder called test, and we are going to copy all the files. This is a neat trick to open Explorer uh, Explorer window inside just copy every file into this folder and after this is completed we can go to the Raspberry Pi terminal we have inside we have here sorry and reconnect to it Okay, we are there, and uh, we are in the desktop, desktop, and the test folder that is being copied 
a list. It's being created. And now when we have finished, we need to do an extra starter to be able to run the application. Let's go back to the slides in order to not miss anything. After this is copied, we have just done this copied everything, uh, the build results, to the Raspberry Pi folder. And after we have copied the files, we need to locate one special file that is our executable file. But Linux still doesn't know that it's executable. In order to make it uh, executable, we have to uh, execute a uh, command in order to make it executable. Let me show you, I have to close some windows. I have opened too many windows. And well, the file is one that is very well hidden because it's part of this long listing of files, but it's very easy to locate it because it doesn't have the, the extension. In our case, this file will be the very, name, the very same name that our project. So there should be this file inside one that has no extension and is called the same uh, the, the same as the, the project and we have to execute one command to make it executable this command okay i will execute it but just let me copy this command because I haven't memorized it yet. Okay, here we go. The My Web API executable file is now actually executable. And now we can execute it with these special syntaxes. Okay, this syntax, okay dot slash slash and the name of the executable like this and we are going to do it right now my web API it's now loading and voila it's running right now we have the web API running and ready to accept requests from not the outside world but the inside world because uh, it's listening to to this uh, url and that it's local host host uh, the problem with this is that it only it only accepts requests from this very uh, own device so it will only accept requests from raspberry pi itself uh, we will fix it in the next steps but right now we can test it with this command line excuse me but i have to <laughs> interrupt the slides uh, in order to copy and um, I'm opening a new session new SSH session and in this command we'll try to invoke one method in our BI it's making the request and the request in order to fix that we have to just to put this line uh, add this line to the program CS that we are 
see in here. Uh, program CS, yes, sorry, here. Just put this line and you will be able to call the web API from any device. The main problem with this uh, way of proceeding with the building and the manual deployment, it's exactly that, that it's manual. Okay, this is the, the, the missing slide I have forgotten. Uh, well, after you have made these changes in the code, you will see this address, this form, format of address. That means that it will, it will uh, serve any request from any device on your local, local network. And well, as I was mentioning before, uh, well, we made it, uh, the process is very, very intricate, and the default application is quite basic, and the deployment is uh, very slow and, uh, and time-wasting uh, process, and it involves deleting, copying files and establishing permissions to files and well this is very boring uh, i hope you are not sleeping by now <laughs> i hope you aren't and uh, fortunately we can make it uh, way better and we can uh, make it faster and less prone to errors and uh, missing steps and right now, this is the fast lane. We will use a net core template I've uh, prepared for you all. This, this template is, uh, you don't have to download it explicit, explicitly. Uh, you don't have to go to anywhere. Just open a command line and write this, .NET new da, 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 Raspberry Pi, Pi template. And after you have installed the template, you will be able to create a new kind of template that it's exactly this one. SP.NET Way API for Raspberry, uh, excuse me, the R, the missing R, <laughs> Pi for Linux. That is abbreviated like this, RP Web API. And after we have installed the template, just go ahead and write this command. This command will create a brand a new project with everything configured. It's a better project. It's, it's a more complete pro project than the default one that is created with Visual Studio through the wizards. After we have executed this, this uh, command line, uh, uh, this, this command line, this command, we will have a new folder and uh, we have, uh, well, I, I think I will show you. Uh, okay, let me open a CMD prompt. For example, if you go to the desk, desktop, and create test. Oh, well, you don't have to create it, but, but anyways, you put this .NET, new RP web API, test API. Okay, so what do we have? We have this. this project created automatically and this project is ready to deploy and by default it has a lot of things that are way convenient for you as a developer like uh, like serilog the, the logger the swagger endpoint in order to check your api and so on 
but first in order to deploy with ease uh, i have prepared another tool that is called superjmn.net ssh this tool uh, is very easy to use you just have to put a command and your application will be deployed with no extra steps involved let's do it and um, you will understand it very uh, at the very first uh, uh, attempt well with this tool uh, in the blink of an eye yeah in the blink of an eye and you have to run it in the root folder of your application so just go into the um, into the folder where the cs approach the project name uh, is is uh, located and run this darkness ssh create template with the project name you want after you have created the template a new file will appear on the folder and this file is the file that uh, will have the configuration for the deployment well nothing it, nothing better than seeing itself uh, seeing the, the file uh, it contains the destination on the raspberry pi this is the folder that in which the application will be deployed the host name of your raspberry pi your username and the password you just have to uh, configure according to your your raspberry pi and after this is configured just save save the file and run this .net ssh deploy well the tool will compile everything inside the project deploy the files and do whatever to make it uh, executable so after this is done uh, you don't have to do any anything else you are ready to test your application application inside the raspberry pi okay uh, well you will find out that uh, this application we have uh, deployed is configured is uh, predefined with the server and logger and we can conveniently uh, invoke and start the application with this parameter that is the URL binding that we will serve with the application. If we put this, this with the parameter, with the asterisk, we will be listening to any host name. So, if we deploy the application and we put this on any navigator on any uh, any host in your local network you will be able to access the, the web api uh, let's see this let's see it okay okay let me go Ah, this is fine. I'm canceling it. Let me head over to. Okay. You see, this is the basic Web API, the basic, the listen all, better Web API. Uh, we are running the better Web API that it's the one that is created with the template so with this template with this template this rp web api you are creating this uh, let me find the window the better web api so i have deployed the the uh, code previously the, the build results previously in order to make it faster okay 
uh, if we run this better web API with the configuration let me check the exact syntax URL it's very difficult to remember every command inside a, a webinar HTTP okay uh, it's not working <laughs> it's not working nice <laughs> HTTP nothing works okay I finally got it okay let's let's execute it running running loading okay it went as expected and we are going right now to test the application let me open one tab uh, okay one moment uh, okay this is a navigator this is well a browser Navigator, well, Netscape Navigator was a cool navigator. And we have to put this on port 5000 Swagger and look how nice it shows the, the Swagger site to try our API. Okay, we have just invoked one of the methods of, of our API. It's up and running, so we're done with this. You know, with this, uh, with, with this application, you can, you can take it as a start of, uh, of your application of your dreams. <laughs> okay, you have a very interesting way to expose your API well after this uh, we need uh, oh, we need we, we should know another cool tricks we can employ to make it even more interesting uh, well as a server you see that it's better to start as the Raspberry Pi as, as soon as the Raspberry Pi uh, is is uh, boot. So how can you do that? How can you make the Raspberry Pi uh, at the boot the the boot attempt the boot stage? Uh, how can you make it start the the web API? Just edit this file rc.local and add this this line. It's uh, more or less the command we have uh, executed before with the URLs mm, parameter and with this end character at the, uh, at the very last part of the line. Um, well, it's very important that you have this because during the boot stage, uh, if you don't put this character uh, in case uh, the application is uh, is waiting for input like our application will do the system will not boot at all so don't forget to put the put this if you are going to uh, if you are going to put the execution of your api or or, or of your web application uh, at the boot time and well in order uh, for the Raspberry Pi to be reachable 
from the outside, we will need a DDNS service in order to redirect the name of a uh, given name of the e of internet, uh, for example, uh, myowndomain.com or anything, anything you can think of. Uh, you will need some name to resolve to your IP. And these DDNS services uh, do exactly that. Uh, one uh, that I recommend is DAC DNS. It's very easy to configure and it's for dummies uh, <laughs> like me. Uh, so you will, you will find it very, very easy to use. And well, in order to complete completely uh, achieve our goal, we need to open the ports in our router and depending on your router, this is done in uh, one way or in another way. I don't, I, I cannot explain how to do, uh, how, how to open ports in your router. And well, it's very useful to also to learn about ChromeTab. This uh, is a tool that will run your command your, your your application, sorry, your application in a timely fashion. Uh, what's that? Uh, you need uh, some process process to be executed on say on Monday uh, 9 p.m. You have to create a Chrome expression that uh, it's like a program with the, it's like a schedule with the times at which the Chrome tab utility will run your application. And well, it's very useful for maintenance process, processes and bulk, bulk data importations. Well, this is a, a very useful URL. This is a site that contains very interesting uh, it's, it's a tool you just uh, indicate the schedule and it, it gives you the cron tab uh, expression the cron exp expression you have to put and this is the last part of the webinar that is working with the G gpio port so, um, you have noticed the uh, Raspberry Pi has a very long port that is full of pins that you can use to uh, communicate with another hardware components. Uh, well, the most important thing is that you can control them uh, at core applications. And it has no, no difference, it has no difference uh, regarding to the applications uh, with the mm, API application we have deployed before. You just have to create a console program and, and you're done. Just put in the code that we, con we control the GPIO port and it will Will, it will work. It's not. It's not complex. As you. We'll see. In the next. Steps. Okay. Uh, I'm not advertising anything, but uh, I got uh, better ones, I think. And this is our breadboard uh, that it's a board that put your components on 
and well, it's that juicy working, well, not working right now, now but uh, you will understand how to use it. Okay, it's very, very easy. You just have to connect the Okay, just do this assembly and prepare to work with the GPIO, the code. Well, we are using this library, Uno Square Raspberry Pi IO. This is the link you need in order to uh, get some reference data and documentation. It's, it contains uh, a lot of valuable information. Uh, moreover, you can go there and ask questions. They are very fast asking questions. And well, you need it uh, in order to use uh, the pins because the number, the exact numbering of, of the pins is spec specified on this site. Well, we just believe that we know which port, which, which pin we are using. And just believe me that this code is very easy to understand. Well, it's just a standard .NET Core console application. App application. Uh, it consists of just two methods. One is the main entry point that just calls the test LID blinking. This is the blinking pin that is the pin 00. The 00 pin is the one that is called GPIO 17. So the 00 is this pin. This is the current that we come from this pin, uh, passes uh, the resistance, uh, lights up the LID and comes to the ground pin. The ground pin is the, like the, the negative, the negative pin. Okay, after we have this uh, program, uh, we have to connect the Raspberry Pi and deploy the, te the, the, uh, the program, the, the application, and run it. After we are running it, if we made everything and we acquired everything correctly, okay, we will get this. And this is the most interesting thing <laughs> you can if, uh, L and L ID. Uh, let's see it working. I've recorded this this morning, and you can see it's the very same schema and the LED the LID blinks. Okay, we are past 18 minutes from 6 p.m. So, well, we are finished. I, I did my best to, uh, to explain everything. But these slides will be available on the video too for you to try and test. And if you have any question, it's a good time to, to ask me. And while you drop that questions, I have to announce the winner of the Raspberry Pi Zero. The winner, uh, okay, the winner, Janir has told me that is Alejandro Valdivia. Alejandro Valdivia. Ah, okay, Alejandro Valdivia. Okay, you're the winner. 
<laughs> Alejandro, you are the winner. <laughs> okay, it seems that you are writing, you are writing on the chat. Are you there, Alejandro? You're the winner. Okay. Uh, so, mm, okay, okay, yes. You have to uh, send us some way to contact you, uh, maybe via, via private conversation, or maybe writing an email with your information to my address. Okay. Some, okay, my email, okay, okay. We have the email, perfect, perfect. Alejandro, we have your email address. I will write it down right now, winner.txt. Okay, congratulations, Alejandro. Perfect. Uh, okay. Uh, have you have two emails or something? Okay. Perfect. Uh, some whether we will have this code available for download.